Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our software testing bootcamp where we are talking about the chapter 2 that is software development life cycles and in order to continue ahead we have the next segment to continue with is 2.1 traditional development models and we have discussed about waterfall in our previous tutorial. It's time to continue ahead and look into the next model which is V model. Let's understand about why V model is slightly different than the waterfall. The V model is again one of the sequential development models, just like waterfall. A sequential development model is where the activities happen once after the other, like one after the other in a sequence, and you do not have a provision to go back to the previous ma a previous particular phase, unlike the iterative ones. But right now we are just talking about the sequential. And let's understand what V model has to convey us in terms of the development model. If you're looking at the screen right now, we got already the V model being displayed to you, and we are trying to understand what these phases are all about. Now, the number one on the left, we basically start with gathering the business requirements. Now, the business requirements are those which are given by the business, by the customer, to your business analyst. A business analyst generally gathers all the information from the interaction of the customer and look documents that in a professional like a user interactive manner and that's where this document can also be called as BRS which is business requirement specification now later when it comes to the internal discussions of the same we try the understanding that the BRS is something which is written in a communication language what a business narrates the system as now this is where my technical team may not be able to understand that what exactly is the need in a technical format. So the BA spends a little more effort to convert the BRS, that is business requirement specification, into system requirement specification. Where there's also some technical differences between BRS and SRS, that is system requirement specification. That is BRS is more from a user perception that it could be having use cases, it could be having a user persona, an interactive interaction of the use cases that, hey, this is what a business flow will be. This is how the system will be used by a particular user profile. What is a user profile? Just like a user working on the system, right? So as a user, I would like to do that. As a user, I should be able to navigate, enter this value, click on this button, and this is what should happen. Now, system requirements will be more of a technical side of it where generally we define it in a technical manner that this is what my team would understand in order to implement it, test it, or design it. Once the system requirements are well documented, the next phase we step into is design. But again, design is further elaborated here in two different stages. That is high-level design and low-level design, which in V model is called as architectural design and detailed design. So here, a high-level documentation of design would happen, which would be done by the architects of your team, and they will be responsible for designing the product in terms of building up the background, UI, UX, etc., to make that field, uh, that particular functionality, operate, right? Interacting with the database, creating the connectivity between the web services and the front layer that is application layer and making things just happen that this is how the you know look and feel or the background architecture should be so that it can sustain or it can allow you to publish those objects in the front layer that is ui user user interactions right once the architectural design is done we deep dive into the same design and create more concrete level information and again we are not talking about being an architect so this minute or high level information would be enough for you to relate it. But of course, when you start working in a more deeper, deeper dive, you pretty much understand that, hey, this is what the design looks like. This is what it says. So for an example, if there's an API in place, right, you may understand that the API response, that is request and response would be a part of my interface design. That this is what the request body should be. This is what the parameter and their attribute values should be which you should be requesting and this is what the server will respond back to you when it comes to the responses now once the design is pretty much done you move into the implementation which is the core part now coding is done by developers here and once the coding is done initial levels are performed that is component testing 
it is very pretty much understood that the component testing is also called as unit testing. We'll be talking about levels in our same chapter, but a little later in our different tutorials. So first level of testing is the unit testing or competent testing. And here, the agenda is to make sure that every single smallest component is working fine or not. Or more importantly, is built as per the expectation or not. Also to understand here that unit testing are the levels which are generally conducted by developers. Uh, aren't we contradicting with the understanding that the developers are only responsible for developing and testers are responsible for testing the product? Yes, of course, you're right. But there is also a understanding about the independence of testing, which says that testing or quality of the product is just not testing team responsibility. We want developers also to understand. Moreover, when it comes to the unit level, if developers are performing it at the code level, it is more convenient and more satisfying compared to working on the UI UX, like a end user. So program level testing can be performed by the developer and it'll be easy for them to review it. At the same time, easy for them to find the issues and fix them quickly. You don't need a tester to run it on the UI initially and find the bugs and report it to the developer taking a long time to respond to these things, right? So now the point is, how exactly do you do that? So developers will code, one developer will code it and send it to another developer who will be performing unit testing, having all the reports being populated and sending it to acceptance of the testing team in order to kick off with the next level, which is integration testing. So once unit testing of some of the modules are done, integration testing kicks off. On a very high level now, integration testing is the level where data flow between the modules are tested, but it's not limited to that. We can talk about between components, we can talk about within system or between systems as well. So I'll be elaborating that to you when we come to the integration testing level. Once integrations are done between modules, we move into the system level, where system test is all about testing a product as a whole. And the more important thing is to understand whether the system what we were supposed to build has been developed or not. Once system testing is completed, we invite the business, that is the customer, to come and collect their product. And in order to collect their product, which is built by you, they perform a level of testing, which is called as acceptance testing. Acceptance testing is of course performed by the customer, in your premises in order to accept the product. Of course, there are levels of acceptance testing too. That is alpha testing, beta testing, and we'll be talking about that in a little later detailed videos, right? Also to understand, there's a good protocol to relate here that the planning and analysis and designing of test cases of a particular test level begins during the corresponding development activity. Now here in vModel, the development activity is not about coding. The development activity is entire the left side of your vModel. Creating documentation, designing, is all about developing the items or work products. So if you see the relationship, for example, if I talk about system testing, the right side system testing level is for dynamic testing, executions, executing system test cases. But in order to talk about what do you do till then, answer is you review the system requirements, you design your system test cases, you build the system test environment. When do you do all these things? Between the system requirement gathering and the system testing phase execution, right? So during that span, you go through the system requirements, understand it, design your test cases, and even prepare the test environment required to perform system testing, and by that time, you complete all this work, you will be at the system testing level on the right. And that's where you start execution. Remember team, the right hand side of your V model are only for dynamic executions. You do not prepare test cases when you get the module. You create the test cases as and when the requirements or the basis is finalized. And for each level on the left correspondingly is your test basis. In order to do acceptance testing, your reference model will be business requirement. For system testing, system requirements. For integration testing, you need access to architectural design. 
And in order to do component testing, you need access to detail design as well as code. So this gives us, gives us a very clear picture that what exactly vModel is all about, how exactly it can help us to create the products using vModel. But again, do not forget, a model, a development model is selected based on the product and project characteristics. It's not that you just blindly can select any model in order to test a system. You need the understanding of the project and product characteristics to define which model will be helpful for that particular project or the product to be utilized. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to assist you with all your queries. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.